one of the reasons I think they said that they chose Crusader as the system they wanted to start with is because every type of biome, for the most part, that they wanted to, to focus on building was located in Crusader. Gas giant, city planet, desert planet, ice planet, mix of all sorts of different things. Um, dead rock kind of moons or whatever. I think, uh, you know, it's all here. And so this was the perfect system for them to start building the game on. I'm really looking forward to seeing their implementation of the gas giants and how it's going to work because Infinity Battlescape does it pretty well. And uh, especially when you go start going to the clouds and then there's like a base in front of you and you go down too far and your ship gets crushed from the pressure. Yeah. Which I think, you know, is a pretty fair way of doing it. There's just the radar doing its wacky ball thing again. Second here. So, you know, with, with Squadron 42 getting ready to go into beta by quarter one, I'm still debating if I want to place, like, I want to wait to get the new computer until they announce a, a release date. Like an actual, like, okay, we've gone to beta, we've done the testing, we're moving into an alpha state, and then there's an official release date. I think maybe holding off to the point that they announce an, initial, an actual release date means that I'd be able to fully enjoy the game. Well, DCS, the F-14 is going to be a good study, I think, for multi-crew, uh, particularly in a fighter. Because the Hornet, to some degree, especially, you know, obviously going to talk about the Super Hornet, it's kind of like the F-14 of, uh, of Star Citizen. So, to me, I really want to I want do a comparative analysis. Now, if the new flight model has a proper VTOL system, or at least proper VTOL flight, as far as the dynamics go, I do own a Harrier in DCS. I haven't flown it yet. I, I bought it just solely for the express purpose of comparing um, potential VTOL systems, and it was on sale. Uh, oh. I got it like at the 50% off sale. I don't expect them to match the full depth that DCS comes because it's once again it's a bit too hardcore for some people. But you can get something similar without you know going all the way. Um, Anyway, I don't know when this episode's going to come out, if, it's, if I use any of this footage, but you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I could be doing Evil Cotty the time this thing comes out, and we just don't know. And that's the thing, too, when Evil Cotty comes out, you know, I, I, these episodes may be put on hiatus, because I don't want to, I don't want to take time to do these episodes, or, or the, putting these things together, when, when I could, when I should be focusing on, um, you know, on, on building, uh, or helping them build the, the flight model out. So we'll just have to see, you know, uh, channel is good, the channel is good to have, but uh, the priority is always going to be making sure that flight is great. And I have to cut back on the channel for a while to get more to, more time in, and so be it. I'm kind of surprised that they'll <clears throat> let you sit in the cockpit with any armor on. Well, eventually, from what I understand, that's not going to be the case. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're sitting in a fighter that you won't be able to we'll have any more than light armor. Uh, if you're sitting like in a troop transport, you can probably wear heavy. They're gonna they're gonna restrict it, I think, depending upon the kind of vehicle that you're in. Uh, that I think they've addressed that several times. Just as right now, that's not a system that's been implemented. Um, for example, if you're a fighter pilot, I would imagine that a fighter pilot, generally speaking, would only have room unless the ship has a dedicated storage facility that you could wear a light armor and uh, carry a pistol. Carrying like I'm going to get in my Gladius. I'm going to carry you know a rail gun with me. It's not going to work. If they want to keep it realistic, uh, and I, I think that's one of the things with like the Buccaneer. <clears throat> people were upset that that with the Buccaneer that they were supposed to come with a storage um, uh, that basically you could put weapon storage racks or whatnot. Yeah, and it's and, and even on the rebuild, uh, you know, it's not it's 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 not there. Uh, the rework order. It, it was an important feature to a lot of people because like okay, it's a fighter. It's a little bit less armored, but you know I can put additional equipment that you know normally you wouldn't be able to carry. And when it didn't come to fruition, I think a lot of people were weren't too happy with it. And I, and I totally get that. That's why I like having like the weapon racks, and, and that's why it's weapon racks are important. Like in larger ships, you know you can put your your bigger guns in the weapon racks because the odds are once again once it gets implemented, you you won't be able to sit down carrying those. Yeah. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Um. I think in a lot of respects that. Most times, it doesn't make sense that 
you'd be able to carry more than two weapons anyway, a primary and a, and a secondary. I mean, carrying like four weapons is a little too... Maybe a little too Mass Effect or a little too Halo for me. But, I, I mean, comparing to Star Wars, the X-Wing must have had some storage because Luke carried his gear in it. Yeah. Well, it was, it was, in, it was in the belly. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's, that's what I'm saying is that, yeah, there's, 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 gosh, I'd almost rather have those missiles on the wings and the Hornet and those two doors that fold out have like the little storage racks where you put stuff and then like you, you, you hit the button, the thing comes down, your rifle's on the inside, you grab the rifle, you know, and then it's, it, that, that would be cooler than the missiles on the inside, um, and more useful. But yeah, that's the kind of thing, yeah, it, it's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of refining still yet to be done. Uh, I feel on, on the on the ships and some of this functionality. I think the, I looked at, look at it dialed in, but right now, a lot of that is that's just kind of like beta details where you start going, okay, this this works, this doesn't. We need to change this. We need to change that. Um, right now, just getting the, the tier zero implementation of every dynamic needed for Squadron Forty Two is going to be the focus, which makes total sense and have us test that as the beta. Now, that's the thing, too, with the Squadron 42 in, in the beta status. If that's, I, I assume that's going to be, you know, uh, there's going to be an alpha test um, for the Squadron 42. For I don't know if that's going to be a separate Evo Cotti. I don't know if it's going to be the same Evo Cotti. The, pro the problem that that I see with the Squadron 42 testing at all, Evo Cotti otherwise, is that, and this annoys me to no end, but you've got people who who, who leak Evo Cotti stuff all the time. And you're in Evo Cotti, you're, you're not supposed to, you know, obviously it's NDA. So could they trust even their Evo Cotties with not leaking sections of the game before the game goes live? And that that's a real quandary because, you know, there are people basically, they're taking, from from, from what I've seen, because if they're not, they're, you know, there's like a watermark. So like, that's how they can tell who's doing it. But like if people are taking other people's stuff and then putting it, it it's a mess. It's a mess. And there's always someone out there that's got to ruin it, right? Um, well, I've seen some guys who I know are in Evocati already pre-record everything while they're in Evocati. And it's their, their fingers over the render button. <laughs> and as soon as it comes out, bang, it's uploading, and it's a, so they can be the first one to get views. Yeah, and then uh, I would assume that's what they're doing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I'll, I'll deal with myself. Because then you'll see, then sometimes I'll have a commentary. Well, this this was an early build, and since this build, uh, it's been the problem, the bug has been fixed. It's like, well, so you when I, when, I, this I, the when it comes stuff. to Evocati, I don't, I don't, I, I don't use any footage from Evocati. There was a, the one time after it went to it went to live that there, there, I think it went to the, sorry the PTU that the, the watermarks were still on for some reason. I couldn't do anything about that, but you could see it on the video to some degree. But you know, I mean, that was a weird scenario. But I was like, well, it's NDAs dropped, so that's fine. Well, February's halfway over. Lord knows if any, if any of this video comes out, it might be like April. I don't even know. Um, and it's, it's, uh, I would guess that they want us, since you know Aaron was saying he wanted to do a flight testing thing uh, separately, that basically the um, it's got to be within the next week or so. They they want to they know they'd want to get a jump on it knock that out of their hair before they at least it's not going to be finished it's no way that a build could you know flights could be finished i would say as a first iteration it's going to have a lot of problems just because you have to refine it i as i said it's going to be one or two builds past the initial release before they get where they want to go which is actually close to the timetable they need to have a flight model that's solid enough uh, so they can refine the ai to get it ready for the beta for squadron 42 so it's it's tight it's tight um but it can be done a tricky part is balancing everything with all the sk ships scope and scale, particularly when you got to consider the fact that a lot of the ships that you're going to have Squadron 42 aren't going to be flown directly by the player. So in some regards, applying the flight model to the ships that we have in the Persistent Universe 
should hopefully help them design the mechanics or refine the mechanics of the ships, similar ships that the player, uh, while they're interacting with, they're not um, they're not directly flying. For example, like they're gonna have like if you see a reclaimer in the uh, where the hell did the base go? It's pointed at it. Anyway, so uh, say like they have a reclaimer, right? Yes. And clearly the player isn't going to be flying said reclaimer. But, you know, if, the, if there's a battle or something involved with that reclaimer, then it'd be good to know exactly how that thing moves. 